got, I got, I got, I got loyalty, got royalty inside my DNA. Cocaine quarter piece, got war and peace inside my DNA. What's up YouTube? My name's Dwayne, this is Homebrew Subaru, and I'm very happy to bring you this episode. I, uh, this happens to be my 100th upload, and also I'm going to call it my 250 subscriber episode. I uh, hit 250 subscribers last week, really proud about that, and uh, I'm kind of got over that first, almost got into the first year of being on YouTube. I uh, got a hundred videos uploaded some of, some of the earlier ones are just short clips and obviously not as well done but uh, I've got a lot of good videos up there and some of them are really starting to take off in views which I really appreciate um, so this episode's gonna con concentrate on two things and uh, that's why it makes it so important I've been kind of putting off on reviewing my Impreza and uh, I've gotten quite a few private messages, uh, just comments, and even in the forums of just people asking me to to do a little bit more of a review of this car. And uh, I finally decided this episode I'm going to take the time and I'm going to kind of walk through it. I'm going to show you basically what I've done to the car, the parts that I put on it, and why it works the way it does with the parts that I'm using. Uh, second part of the video I'm gonna more concentrate on shout outs I've never been able to do any kind of shout out video uh, there's a lot of channels that I watch that uh, don't necessarily need more subs but uh, I just want to I just want people to know that that's what I'm watching and uh, I really I really enjoy some of the things that people are doing out there it gives me a lot of great ideas for my own channel and uh, the community out there, I mean there's just so many good people doing this that the interaction with them um, makes it that m much more enthusiastic for me to, to actually do my own stuff so uh, there's going to be quite a few <laughs> shout outs I do watch a lot of channels, I'm subbed to a lot of channels um, and, I, and I, I'm quite, I'm on YouTube a lot, you know a lot of evenings I just stay on YouTube and I just go through people's videos and I probably don't comment as much as I probably should, um, but uh, I, I feel that my, the comments that I'm making are certainly worth putting there, and I realize a lot of people like them, get thumbs ups, and I get a lot of comments back that I'm able to interact with, with uh, other YouTubers and just other viewers. So this is going to be the review of my 2000 Subaru Impreza Outback Sport. Uh, I acquired this car on... Uh, uh, kind of a whim. I, I, my old car, I ended up putting into a ditch. I ruined the whole front of the car. I needed something else, um, with the thought in mind that I wanted to swap all the parts from my other car into this one, which is what I ended up doing. I'll leave links at the end of this for uh, the Impreza build slideshows. They basically go through all the photos that I took while uh, building the old car and then swapping all the parts to this one and then continuing to work on this one. I've had this car for four years. So we'll start here at the back. Now just keep in mind I haven't actually cleaned the car or, or prepared it in any way for this video. Uh, this is as clean as I would keep it, you know, driving it regularly without, without a wash. Um, and I mean actually there's a little bit of water that's probably gotten into the car somewhere and that bit of condensation is built up. Uh, but in any case, I mean, I can get all that stuff out just leaving it in the garage. 
But in the back here, um, this is not the original hatch door. This hatch door actually comes off the last car, as you can see in this photo. Um, it was actually on uh, the silver car, and then uh, I prepared it, did, did a bunch of preparation on the on that hatch because the original the original hatch door to this car uh, was caved in, and so I ended up swapping over the silver hatch and, and painting it the matching color. I already had this uh, STI top wing, re replica top wing on that hatch door and a couple of stickers. I mean, I did add more, of course. Uh, this is the Outback Sport uh, mid-spoiler. So that did come off of the other, the green hatch. Um, and then I basically just fastened it. So I have the STI uh, taillights. They, uh, a guy bought them, I, I'm not sure if he bought the wrong ones because he, he wanted them for a sedan, but the wagon and sedan taillights are different. And I wanted the wagon ones, so we cut a deal on those. And uh, so yeah, that kind of kind of does up the back and changed up the back quite a bit. Um, I did get some mud flaps from one guy at some point. They're just kind of homemade mud flaps, but they've lasted so long and they're still in really good shape. These plastic rear valence pieces came along with those side skirts from another friend of mine. Um, they fit the car really well. They are designed for the for the body, but they're, they're you know they're cheap quality. I'm actually shocked that they went through a complete accident and that I still have them. And then coming up in the front, there's just a couple more stickers. Um, the uh, amber corner lights or something that I put in. The fog lights were actually out of the old sport bumper that I had, and uh, I've got the switching LEDs in those. I did end up replacing the actual windshield, um, which is already cracked going across here. Um, the paint is actually black plastic up that I did spray from a gun. It's been on the car for so long that uh, it's going to be near impossible to get rid of it. Uh, I think I'm just going to have to hose the car in some brake clean to get it off. Just let it wrinkle and hopefully scrape it off at some point. You can see up there kind of the original color where the the clear coat has actually continued to chip away from when I sprayed over it. And uh, so yeah, the, the I mean, you can get this color to come out pretty good so that it is nice and black, but the, it's just completely worn out and uh, it, something needs to be done with it. This top piece of trim I did have, have on there when I replaced the windshield, but obviously it got loose at some point going down the highway at stupid amount of speed, and then it just came off. The, uh, the body in the back here, I have addressed, um, but it's, it's come time, it needs to be done again. Uh, it was see what I mean. The paint's flaking off here. This is something that I never really did, and uh, it's getting really weak and, and really thin. Uh, uh, something needs to be done with it. Uh, I've kind of not wanted to get involved with it, trying to just think I would get another chassis at some point. Um, but I might just give it a quick once over, spray the car again, get another couple years, maybe another year. Who really knows? If I were to find another chassis at a really good price, really clean, then I'll just pick it up and, and swap over parts and let this one go. Because um, you can see the side starting to bubble again. I got a whole piece of metal in there and it's still letting go. And here it's starting to bubble out and go. On the inside of the doors there's a small hole on, on this side. Uh, all in all the body's not the worst shape. But as you come into the back and behind this bumper, it's getting quite rotten. And this car did come from the east coast of Canada. Lots of salt. And uh, it just sticks to the cars and absolutely ruins them. So you'll see that the interior has been kept uh, just rather basic. Not a lot been done in here. Uh, the seats are obviously from a JDM STI, I believe version 4. Um, they're still in r really good shape. A lot of the red color still left in them. Um, 
it got like a leather boot for the uh, shifter, uh, like an STI replica style uh, shift knob. The uh, gauges I have are, are just from a European RS, uh, so they are white face, but they just in kilometers per hour, no miles per hour reading on them. Uh, my wideband gauge is uh, an Innovate. Um, I have some cheap gauges set up over here. Uh, there's just the JDM um, eBay gauges. <laughs> uh, but I've got them custom set up in the vent. I took out the vent and just kind of set up the pods to direct at the driver. Um, just below them you'll see uh, electronic boost controller which I did have set up before but isn't currently being used. Uh, just a double din Kenwood. Um, gets great sound out of that. I do have upgraded Kenwood speakers through all the doors and uh, the uh, sub in the back is a 12 inch Kenwood. Uh, I think it's got a 300 watt uh, Kenwood amp on it. Um, the rear seat was just left as is. It could use replacement. It's got some bad stains in it. It is the original OBS seat. Um, and the same with the, the headliner could use like a nice wash. The whole car could use a really good cleaning actually. Yeah. You'll see I've got the Broadway uh, wide rear view mirror in this car as well. And I think this one's Maybe a little bit of a blue tint on it. Uh, I usually ha I have a space for the GoPro to mount, or one of the cameras anyway, but I usually have a dash cam that's hooked up in here, and uh, a lot of times my radar laser detector is hooked up in here when I'm on the highway. So now I'll move on to like uh, wheels, tires, suspension, brakes. Um, the wheels that are on this car right now are JDM Legacy B4 wheels. So something European came very similar on the WRX. Uh, and when I saw these, I realized how close it actually matched the body, body color. And that's not the reason I made the decision on getting these. But uh, the contrast of this color against so many others uh, looks really nice. The tires that I'm currently using on these rims are uh, uh, Nitto Motivo tires in a 215-45-17. Um, they're, they're, they, f they fit the rim really well with the amount of lowering that I have there's absolutely no rubbing whatsoever the, uh, the combination is perfect uh, I am using a 5mm spacer on all four corners and uh, it just gives a little, little bit more flushness to the wheel now there has been quite a bit of suspension work done to the car uh, it's sitting on KYB AGX struts uh, with H&R uh, lowering springs, uh, which are a sport spring, um, required some homemade spacers to raise the saggy butt. If you've read that online, uh, some strut and lowering combinations for the rear of a wagon will make it appear very saggy in the rear. And getting a custom spacer or making your own uh, to raise up the back end. Uh, will eliminate that problem. So I've got those I made up those homemade and got those in there the uh, stance and uh, Height ride height of the car front to rear is just absolutely perfect the way I have it Front and rear sway bars have both both also been upgraded, but they're actually used parts off of a Legacy Outback from 99 so the second legacy platform um, the bigger cars or wagons um, all had a larger sway bar that fit the Impreza NA cars bolt right on. Uh, so it's a 21 mil in the front and there's a 17 millimeter in the back. And I actually do want to upgrade that 17 probably to a 20 in the back just to firm up the st stiffness and do some links and bushings in the back as well. Now to dial in some perfect alignment, I did, uh, there's camber bolts where they need to be and some slotting on the struts where it needs to be. Um, the rear lateral arms are also adjustable uh, so I was able to zero out the rear toe and get all four wheels exactly lined up perfectly for a four wheel alignment. So the other lateral arms that are in the back they've actually got upgraded TIC bushings in them and 
I think all the other bushings, control arms, front and rear trailing arms, sway bar bushings have all been replaced with prothane urethane bushings, uh, which really stiffened up the car, made a lot of NVH come into the car, and uh, definitely uh, got rid of some of my little snaps and noises that would happen in the car, uh, just firmed up everything solid. It also has a rear strut tower bar, but I would like to get the actual SDI uh, front strut tower bar. That um, will fit around my intercooler, I believe. And it's just an item I keep on saying that I'm going to buy, and I just keep on putting it off because of the cost of them. And I have had this car on the alignment rack quite a few times to dial in the alignment just perfect. The brakes have been upgraded, but not heavily. Uh, the fronts are off that Legacy Outback from 99. Uh, but I have replaced the calipers and done all the new front brakes. Um, so quite a bit larger rotor and going from a single piston caliper that was originally on the car to a two piston caliper. And in the rear, which was originally drum, uh, I've converted it to the rear single pot rear disc brake conversion, basically from the regular Imprezas and WRX from that 02, 03, 04 era. The entire ABS system has com been completely eliminated from the car. All new lines have been basically routed through the entire car, as well as stainless steel brake hoses at all four corners. As for winter wheels, which will be coming up soon, because I probably will drive this car at some point in the winter after I get the exhaust put on it, I have 16 inch WRX rims that uh, apparently this spider couldn't get a meal out of and he uh, died there. Uh, so, these uh, have Westlake uh, SP606 uh, studded tires on, uh, still a really deep tread, I've had these so many seasons now, um, but they really make the car move through the snow and give you a, a whole lot of confidence when there might be a little bit of black ice out, um, have saved me quite a few times. So now I'll move on to the uh, good stuff. So what I currently have installed in this car is a EJ251. It's a 2.5 liter single overhead cam NA motor. Uh, it actually is from a 2001 Legacy, I believe. Um, it only had uh, maybe 140,000 kilometers or less when I, when I actually put it in this car. It probably has around 160,000 now which is uh, I guess around the 100,000 mile mark. Um, this is not the original engine that was in this car or the original engine that I took out of the other car to put into this car. So I first boosted a 2.2, an EJ222 engine and uh, basically I had some rod knock in that from not paying attention close enough to oil. And so I ordered up this thing and put it in there and just put all the turbo accessories onto it to make it run. To make it run the turbo, uh, there's a WRX TD04. Uh, it's been kind of custom mounted with a kind of like a custom up pipe to meet it into this location. The down pipe has been tilted and cut so that the turbo actually is tilted back a little bit. And the main reasoning for that is so that I could pass through and, and not have to think about going underneath the intake manifold to get airflow to the inlet of the turbo. So I've just got a nice little cold air pipe, basic filter, uh, catch can is installed. Um, that's all routed up to a 2006 WRX intercooler um, with a eBay uh, SSQV blow off valve or sequential. Um, gives it more of the chirp kind of sound. Um, the original bypass valve that I just had going to atmosphere uh, because this is a map sensor car no need to recirculate. Uh, it had a good huffing noise but I could tell that it was leaking so I replaced it with this one. And then this uh, actuator believe it or not because it's uh, looking so old and crusty now but that was a Godspeed uh, 5 PSI actuator that I replaced the factory WRX actuator with uh, so that it will open the wastegate at 5 PSI. Obviously you got to get some coolant and oil to the turbo so I mean there's a braided line coming from underneath here 
Uh, it looks like it's been probably shaking around a little bit and it shouldn't be. Uh, there's like the aftermarket uh, oil pressure gauge. Everything's all been plumbed in. The coolant going to the turbo actually comes from the lines that went to the f factory throttle body so they've been adapted to cool the turbo instead. On the ignition side of things uh, it's all just factory. Uh, so factory coil uh, some NGK spark plug wires, uh, running some NGK BKR7E uh, spark plugs, which are our colder range than the factory spark plug that would be in this engine. And the uh, valve covers are basically vented to atmosphere uh, to draw in fresh air through the uh, crankcase so that eventually it'll make its way to the catch can. Uh, there is no PCV it's been el eliminated from this car now over on the fuel side of things is where it gets a little bit uh, messy and uh, disorganized at the moment I guess uh, but basically fuels coming in from a high flow fuel pump in the fuel tank at 255 and it's coming uh, up here it splits into two fuel filters because the amount of fuel that's coming through uh, and for at this moment it actually tees right back into a single line uh, which actually splits a second time and is feeding both fuel rails in parallel so that uh, they're not in series it doesn't come in on one side pass through two cylinders and then over to the other two both sides or both banks are fed evenly and uh, it tees off somewhere in the back here and that line comes all the way up to the factory regulator and then from the factory regulator we come up to this FMU or fuel management unit this is a 10 to 1 ratio unit so for every every one psi of boost pressure it receives from the manifold it will increase fuel pressure 10 psi on top of base pressure so at 5 psi this fuel system is running like a hundred psi and the because of the fuel pump will supply pressure and demand with the flow uh, when you get into boost the injectors are just almost uh, forced uh, to spray that much fuel so you might be asking yourself well what fuel management system are you using and uh, I'm not using one this is running off the factory computer that comes with the car and actually the computer that's in this car is for a 2.2 liter engine running this 2.5 but regardless um, when this system goes into boost, uh, normally the computer would freak out as soon as it see, saw over a PSI of, of pressure in the manifold. It's always expecting the manifold to be under some reasonable vacuum. So we need to trick the system, and that's all I've done here. You can see here, this is where the map sensor used to sit, and I just have a little vacuum line that comes off of that port uh, feeding these check valves. And the check valves are one-way check valves. They do not allow air to come in, but they will blow it out. So as this line comes into pressure, being boosted from the turbo, they will blow off that pressure and before the map sensor reads it. So the computer never even realizes that the system is actually going into boost. So you don't get any check engine lights, you don't go into limp mode, and the engine continues to run. Now, is that, how safe is that? Well, it's safe up to a certain degree because really if we're turbocharging, we want to adapt to ignition timing a whole lot. And uh, boosting an NA engine is never a good thing, especially when it's 10 to one compression already. You need to get a lot of fuel into the system, and that's why we're over-pressurizing the fuel injectors to get that excessive amount of fuel into the cylinders so that we reduce the chance of knock and, and things going wrong. Um, that can always happen with this type of setup. Don't think it's the most reliable thing in the world. Using the wideband, I can keep a close eye on what my uh, air fuel ratio is when I'm heavy into the throttle under a lot of load. Uh, as long as the numbers look good, there really shouldn't be anything that happens. Now, if I was to raise the pressure up quite a little, quite a bit more, yes, the stock internals may not hold that anymore and just might blow apart. That's when we think about getting methanol involved.
So other parts that are under the hood, there is a polyurethane uh, kind of a solid mount dog bone mount in there. Both engine mounts have been done. Got some uh, three or four ply silicone hoses hooked up to a dual core radiator with some high speed fans. Uh, keeps the system ultra cool. Uh, thinking about things further back, the transmission is actually uh, a 411 ratio. The clutch setup is uh, Clutch Master Stage 2. Uh, it's got an aluminum flywheel and segmented uh, clutch disc with a high, high clamping load pressure plate. Uh, you need that stuff for this type of build. The stock clutch will not hold this power. It's no matter what you think. I, I've tried a few clutches before the one that I have and none of them would hold the power. None of them. As soon as he walked into boost, psh, the thing would just go to red line. The transmission mount has also been pretty much upgraded to a Group N. The front cross member mounts are TIC bushings. The uh, shifter bushings are all cart boy. Uh, shifter is uh, a cart boy replica from eBay that was so cheap but it's such an amazing piece and, and I just love the way that it still shifts today. Well, last but not least is the exhaust. And the exhaust is something I've played with for quite a bit because I've had the two different engines in this car. Um, when I put this engine in, I went with the with the stainless uh, header, basically with my old crusty WRX and uh, STI patched together exhaust. Uh, until you saw, maybe saw the unboxing video for the new exhaust I plan on putting on this car. So when I drove it in at the first of the video there, you could you could hear how loud the exhaust is and how deep it actually sounds. And just imagine that it's open exhaust with cats. Now imagine it complete with to the back of the car but catless. I mean, I, I just really don't know what it's going to sound like, and I can't wait to hear it and uh, actually get a you know sound clip so that you guys can hear it. So has this setup been reliable for me? Well, for the most part, it has been. I did drive this car across the country from one coast to the other, plugged full to the ceiling with possessions that I have, or had at the time, and uh, it just, it never stopped. It, I don't think I've ever broke down in this car. Uh, it's always gotten me home, no matter what the prob what kind of little problems happened, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud I still have it. That I didn't give up on it and get rid of it and I guess uh, because I have I do have the Forester and I also have the Legacy sitting outside the Legacy has a spare engine for this car I still have the 2.2 that was originally in this thing that I do want to build again so I, I whether I hold on to this chassis or I get another chassis to put all the parts onto I'll probably be sticking with this platform for quite some time so yeah even this thing's old it's getting quite a bit of rust on it it's still my toy, and uh, I I absolutely love driving this thing in the winter time. I have such a blast in it, especially when there's fresh snow on the ground. It's such a f such a fun ride. Um, hit a parking lot and just tear that parking lot right up. Uh, but even in the summer, I mean, the way that it corners and the way the way that it uh, I have the alignment set and the way that it actually performs, uh, it's a really fun car to drive around in the summer. Uh, people underestimate the wagon. I think that's enough about the wagon, but if you guys want to know anything more about it, kind of, you know, leave the questions down in the comments. I'll be sure to get back to you and try and give you some information that you're looking for. And, uh, but yeah, let's move on to shout outs. So to start this segment off, I'd really like to thank all of my subscribers. Uh, I keep on looking at the counter. It's it just going up every day now. And, uh, that's awesome. Uh, hitting that 250 mark meant a lot to me because it, it just shows I am progressing uh, eventually it'll be 500 and I'll get to that 1k mark eventually um, it's taken a lot of hard work but it's all work that I was gonna probably end up doing anyway I do a lot of side jobs for friends and people that I know uh, as well as my own stuff I mean I got enough vehicles that keeps me busy on my uh, spare time that I don't really have any spare time left uh, doing the YouTube channel, you know, really takes up quite a bit of time and uh, making videos, editing, uh, and then doing all the actual physical work 
uh, also takes a lot of time. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Uh, regardless if you sub or not, uh, I'm just I'm happy that people are actually finding my stuff and uh, haven't been really uploading for quite a year yet. So yeah, basically I've got a list compiled of channels that I want to shout out, sh channels that I regularly watch. Uh, might talk a little bit about a couple other channels that I don't normally watch and uh, kind of just give everyone a shout out regardless. So where it kind of starts for me is Mighty Car Mods. I've been watching Mar Mighty Car Mods for years, uh, six, seven years I would say. Uh, ever since I moved from the East Coast, I used to watch their stuff out there. Uh, just because of the Subi stuff in the beginning, I really hooked onto it really fast. And, uh, you know, I kind of only just watched them for the longest time. You know, every once in a while I'd find someone else's video that I really liked, or some burnout, or, you know, rallycross, or autocross, whatever it was. Uh, but there was their channel was the only one that I kind of regularly watched, even though I didn't actually have an account on YouTube or subscribe to them. Uh, obviously, the, the the biggest one that kind of reeled me in in the beginning was Haggard Garage, just because their stuff was highly recommended, and they had already a bunch of videos up, and they were funny. Uh, the original Haggard crew was an awesome thing. Uh, really funny videos, goofing around on cars all the time. It was just, uh, it was something that I I really enjoyed watching. And when Chris Rudnick kind of bran branched off to do his own thing, I realized his channel would be end up becoming quite large. And uh, his videos are funny, he does a lot of really cool stuff. And now that he's making good YouTube money, I'm sure he can just continue going on and on and on. Uh, I don't generally watch the Haggard Boys or Racer Miata too much anymore. Um, but every once in a while I'll, you know, catch up on something or I'll just browse their list of videos and find something I want to watch. Uh, branching off from them, Jimmy Oaks, I watch his stuff every once in a while, but it's not one of my regular views. While watching all the Haggard videos, I became, start, started to become recommended Motion Auto TV. And mind you, this is years ago. This is when Haggard first started, so... Uh, Motion Auto, he had already a pile of videos up, so when I got it and found him, I, I just pretty much watched all of his stuff. I was so impressed, you know, this young guy, younger than me, pulling off the stuff that he was, and, uh, you know, just watching that, watching his, his shop grow, the channel grow, and him grow, uh, I thought was uh, really cool, and it's been cool over the last couple years amazing projects I mean uh, the guy does spectacular work and uh, it was at that point I said okay I gotta start my channel I, I've been watching Trevor for too long and uh, I can do some of the things that he's doing I, I want to do that and uh, so I started pushing myself to make my own channel and that's how my channel started so next I'm just gonna blast through a bunch of the bigger channels that I do watch uh, there's gonna be no particular order no particular like uh, there's probably a lot that I'm actually missing, but I I kind of went through my list of subscriptions and, and picked out the ones that I, I normally watch all the time. Uh, we'll start with some of the you know well-known ones like 1320 Video. I watch their stuff quite often. Uh, you know most of Matt Ferris stuff, the Smoking Tire, and uh, all of his one takes. I, I really like uh, his opinion on stuff. I really uh, think he knows what he's talking about in most cases. Um, the Motor Trend stuff I really enjoy. Uh, anything from Top Gear or the Grand Tour. Always loved the uh, Top Gear guys and I uh, I actually you know really like Clarkson. I, I think he's just hilarious. Uh, another another channel that's really, really been taken off is Boosted Boys. Uh, now they're not so much the Boosted Boys anymore because they just had all this recent breakup. I don't like all this drama from you know the Haggard's stuff to now it's affected the Boosted Boys and you know I, I I mention it in a comment I just rather see a lot of more a lot more solo car channels where someone's just independently doing something and uh, I, I just feel that there would be so much less drama and uh, people would actually get a lot more work done. I'll be catching up on uh, Charlie's videos probably and I actually didn't watch Hayden's stuff uh, before but after he kind of put up his clear the air video, um, 
he sounds like a really cool guy and now I'm gonna probably end up watching most of his stuff. From some of the other bigger car channels I, I end up watching a lot is uh, Calvin's Garage. Calvin's got a just an absolutely beautiful uh, S13 chassis with an RV swap in it. It's kind of what I went after when I started looking for my own car, what kind of videos were out there. I found Calvin's and I just watched most of his stuff and I always continue to watch them. Uh, more skids. Uh, those boys are just so funny. I just enjoy watching their normal stuff. Uh, but uh, all the little projects they have going on, really cool. And uh, they got an awesome attitude and really funny. I also watch the locales. Uh, I don't watch all of their stuff, but I do tend to watch, you know, all the really cool videos that they come out with. Uh, don't watch the boys individually, but I'm, you know, they're pretty funny and uh, they got some really cool projects and awesome cars. Uh, go definitely check out locales if you if you haven't never checked them out. A couple other to mention are Caleb Quanbeck. I like his stuff. Uh, Caleb's a really cool guy. Uh, no problem with just walking around through giant crowds with the cam and uh, he's got you know really cool project of his own uh, B is for build he's just got so many cool projects the, you know, the biggest brightest shop to work in and I just uh, I envy him <laughs> and another very large channel that I do like watching is actually Vizio Racer uh, Vizio Racer has like the encyclopedia of automotive history in his fingertips and I don't know how long it takes him to accumulate all this research but he does a brilliant job with it a lot of people try and hate on him for like just the smallest little things that he doesn't include or he might have a little mistake on but he's got a spectacular channel and tons and tons of automotive history and knowledge diving into some of the smaller channels uh, I found a plethora of small channels to begin with but uh, a couple guys that I started watching, they did a couple live streams, which I really enjoyed. And it was a mix-up of uh, RevMatch, Honda Vlogs, 802 Garage, Gearheads, and Fully Spooled. And a bunch of them would be on the little, you know, cam shots on the bottom. And, then you know, everyone would be able to chat about what was going on. And I thought that was awesome. So I subbed all their channels and I watch all their stuff normally. Um, I comment in most of their stuff. Uh, they're just a bunch of really cool guys, and they're all smaller channels that are up and coming really fast, and I uh, kind of like to jump on the same train. Now this last list of channels is a just a mixed variety, and uh, they're all channels that I really enjoy. Some of them aren't posting anymore or as much, and uh, I'd like to see more coming out of them. But... Uh, and they're kind of scattered. Some, some of them have a lot of subs, some of them are a very small channel like mine. But uh, we'll start off uh, Underfunded Garage. I found him through making comments on other people's videos and uh, I started watching some of his videos and I mean, guy's got some really good videos and he's been on YouTube for quite a while. Um, Supercat500. I found Supercat not, not too long ago. But watching this build, uh, he's putting a VG engine into a 240 and he's got this giant turbo on it. Uh, he, really cool channel, does a lot of cool fabrication stuff. Uh, Sideways Society, he's basically stripped down his 240 and uh, he's reprepping the car, doing a really nice job of it. Uh, OTTP, uh, he's got a 240 that he's uh, got a lot of really cool parts on, really clean car and uh but he's not posting as much anymore i'd like to see more uh mr subaru 1387 he's got like lots and lots of awesome how to's really nicely edited videos um and i usually watch most of them even though i can do the stuff myself i still watch them uh wrench life 604 i just caught up with him and through the comments Go to check out his channel. He's working on everything from his Honda to this old, uh, I think it's a Mercury Park Lane, I think. Uh, so, I mean, he's got some pretty cool videos up. Uh, just kidding. Uh, he's got a quite a small channel, smaller subscriber base, but uh, he's got a plan with his car, uh, 240S13 chassis, that he's uh, seemed to accumulate a lot of parts with, and he goes out to the car every once in a while. He just needs to be making more videos too. Uh, same with Pretty Decent Garage. He, he seems to stop making videos, but he pops one up every once in a while. 
and uh, last couple of have been him taking his uh, 240 to the track and actually getting getting a drift around the track. The the 303 garage they play around with Subies and also they make these uh, informative videos about Japanese vehicles uh, that have been really good, really factual. Uh, definitely seem to be on point with that. Uh, Rav4 GTT he stopped posting, but uh, he had a Rav4 G GT I guess with uh, that he swapped a basically a, a turbo Celica engine from a Toyota Caldina into the Rav4 and uh, really cool rig that he made. Uh, you know, it looks a little bit lifted. It's got the more mud tire on it and uh, he's kind of outfitted the back as more of a camper sleeper it was uh, just a really cool channel I wish you would you know think about posting in the future uh, Mayhem Inc uh, those boys are doing all kinds of things that capture all kinds of uh, footage from events to stuff that they're doing on their own a uh, bunch of crazy guys uh, Street Forged definitely a smaller channel uh, playing with a 240 that's you know just a bunch of young guys working on their stuff and I kind of enjoy those small channels still. Southern Hooning definitely got uh, quite a quite a sub base now they make some awesome videos uh, they get a couple S13s that are often going to the track and getting lots of cool footage making some uh, nicely edited videos something uh, kind of the quality that I'd like to get up to. Ninja X Bart he's got uh, an, a newer STI that he just uh, loaded some new uh, roto, roto wheels that he was sponsored for they look absolutely beautiful on the car he's making quite a do quite a bit of videos uh, and he pops on live for gaming every once in a while uh, ng garage has a 240 that he's basically a 1j 1j swap into it and uh, he often hits the track the car looks like he's basically gone over everything and upgraded everything on the car uh, tin can tuners they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff a bunch of young guys just uh, you know playing with cars and being goofy with them which is kind of the old haggard and uh, but they show you what you can get actually get away with with spending very little money <clears throat> dirt cheap daily uh, he was posting a lot of videos but I guess he ended up going back to work not posting as much anymore but he's got a lot of Subaru stuff and uh, some of his videos are a little bit uh, you know I can kind of catch stuff in them but he's doing his own thing and what it is as it is and uh, I still enjoy watching them uh, junkyard Dan he doesn't post too regularly but uh, he's got some cool videos up and he's been trying to redo this Cadillac right now uh, Nissan mechanic I almost did a collab with he uh, it's not too far from where my parents were when I was actually visiting out in the Toronto area uh, he's got an s13 he just took the old uh, he had a CADT18 in it that he just pulled and he put an SR back into the car. Uh, he's got it all running right now. Uh, Minty Z, uh, he hasn't posted for quite some time, but he's got an old 240Z that he's put an RB20 in, and that's the that's the engine I was kind of thinking I would be using. So that's how I actually found him, and uh, I just think that would be the coolest car. He's got to he's got to get working on that and show us what it's all about. Uh, Christian Meyer, he's, uh, I actually found him because he had the 240, which I'm pretty sure he's going to continue working on, but he, he's got an STI as well that he was uh, planning track days and then he had a little bit of problem with the car, so he's just been kind of taking it easy and doing some small mods to it. Uh, these last couple I've just kind of recently more or less found, uh, Novice Garage, I, I have seen some of their stuff before, but I ended up subbing, their, their st content's getting a little bit more funny and interesting, which I do enjoy. Uh, Chase Schrader, I found him not very long ago, maybe even a week. Uh, he's got uh, an STI and he's he's in Canada, and uh, some of his videos are pretty pretty good. And last but not least is going to be Blue Dog 35. And Blue Dog is someone that I uh, I kind of contacted very early in my early YouTube days, not quite a year ago, uh, trying to just you know get interaction with other youtubers and he was kind of the first guy that really started coming back to me and, and getting interaction and started checking out my videos and commenting on them and uh, I know we're still doing it he's I know he's still checking out my stuff and I still normally check out his um, the channels kind of more gamed base 
but uh, he does the Subaru stuff every once in a while, and uh, he's just finishing up this uh, basically EJ251 rebuild that he's putting back into his Forester. Yeah, I'm just kind of realizing how long this video probably is, and uh, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for me. Leave your questions and comments further down below, and I'll see you in the next one.